the summer and breathe in the nicotine. They were smiling and they were laughing. It is fun to be 16, but she was vulnerable to others. When I was little, I visited two like places. One in my imagination, the other via a car. The first was Hogwarts. The second may as well have been. Both have stayed with me. I will not dare touch your depiction of Hogwarts or try to override the details that your imagination so richly fashioned with those from my own, but I can show you Bryn Athen. In fact, I've already showed you in my spring lookbook that is, but for reasons unknown to me, I've been buzzing with a need to save it from a fate fastened to the background, to place it front and center of your screen, because honestly, it's just too beautiful for a supporting role. So I hope you like this. At Bryn Athen, everything teems with beauty, but not so much with motion. The scarcity of shuffling feet, of laughter, lends a certain stillness to the scene, equal parts tranquil and tragic. Unlike at Hogwarts, no students spill from within the stone arches, no air is broken with wand gestures. Even something lethargic like lakeside lounging would feel less static than this. Yet it's fine because the trickle of passersby is steady and people watching sometimes feels more significant when the people are fewer. Wouldn't you say? I mean, two schoolgirls, broken free from the school, now adventuring, taking photos at the foot of a massive hill, assumes a greater magic, a mindful magic, magic and memorability, than if they were two in a million. Of Bryn Athen, this is just one corner, one fraction of a whole comprised of at least two more stately buildings, rolling hills, fountains, and stone thrones. Literally, stone thrones, I kid you not. So, this is not goodbye.